Schreer played an insane match against a Swedish 1900 who sacrificed his queen at one point. It was absolutely crazy and the move was so beautiful that my commentator, Grandmaster Hammer at 2600 from Norway, did not think in any single way that my opponent was gonna do it. This guy is a chess genius. This everybody is round number seven and I started with the move d4. Like always, I mean, I'm in a Kremlin, I play one d4. So d4, knight f6, c4, c5. And I was actually not expecting him to play this. I wasn't expecting him to play the Benko. Um, in this, I typically only play one line against it. The Nescafe Frappe attack. Yes, guys, it's a real opening. And I've done videos on it. I play it all the time on stream and I could tell that he was super prepared on that line because the moment that I captured, well, he was fine, but after a6, the Nescafe Frappe attack goes with knight c3 and then you sacrifice this e4 pawn, you go e4, b5 and it becomes very tactical. But here I played e3 after thinking for a while because I knew that I didn't want to allow him to get into preparation because let's be honest, I, I don't need him to have 20 engine lines in his head right now. So when I played this, he was really shocked and he was probably like, you know, what's going on? He, he took a little bit of time here thinking and I was really happy about that because it felt like um, I had like psychologically like succeeded in the opening because he seemed a little bit uncomfortable. So here he captured, I went bishop takes b5, that's the idea of e3 that you're defending the pawn and then he went bishop b7. Now you guys may wonder what happens if check over here? Well if check then I have knight c3 and the bishop is defended, there's no trouble. So, and also if check, knight c3 and knight up, I can go with my queen over here and I'm defending everything. So here he won bishop b7 and I played knight c3. Now, um, before I go into a move that he played, which is g6, you guys can see over here that if he would capture here, knight takes d5, which looks a little bit scary because you guys can see that the bishop is looking towards g tail. Then I have knight takes d5 and if queen a5 check trying to win my bishop, you can see that it doesn't work because of this fork. So there's never anything working over here. He cannot capture on d5, so my knight on c3 is protecting really well. Now here instead he played g6 just to develop his bishop on this diagonal and at that point I went knight f3. After knight f3 there's bishop g7 and I castled and I played these moves pretty quickly. He castled as well and now I played e4 because I just thought that this move I need to place this pawn here because with the pawn here my pawn on d5 is always going to be safe. If I would go bishop d2 or something then my pawn would be hanging here in d5 so I think e4 is a really important move to really take control of the the whole position. Now I'm also threatening a little bit to go e5 so my opponent has to go d6 to stop it. Now after this I was really happy. I was looking at my position. I felt like I had a great position. I love my opening. I typically enjoy playing these setups where I'm a pawn up and I'm just trying to hold on to the pawn because it feels good to be a pawn up. So I was really 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 happy here and I could tell that he looked a little bit uncomfortable in this position. Now after d6, um, I decided that it was time for me to get a little bit of queenside space. I had a few different plans, I knew that I wanted to try to reroute a knight to c4 but I didn't really want to do it yet so I went a4 which is a move that I think that I should always do. It's very typical to play a4 and the idea is that you're uh, one pushing your pawn so sometimes you might be able to push it, I mean this pawn can become dangerous. But two, I'm also defending this, this bishop on b5 forever and I'm getting a little bit of space. Sometimes the idea can also be to go rook a3 uh, to get out of this pin. So here he won bishop a6 to try to exchange this bishop which is his bad bishop against mine. And here I had a few different options. I didn't want to capture here because then he's going to be able to get his knight out for free in one turn so I wasn't really that happy about that. So I was thinking here a little bit about what I should do. I didn't want to go back. I ended up going queen e2. The idea of this is that I am defending my bishop and I'm also defending this pawn. So, because if he captures here, I want to be able to capture with the knight, but the issue is that this pawn is hanging. So after queen e2, this pawn is not hanging anymore and I'm able to capture with my knight. And then my knight will be really well placed here on b5. I knew that my dream position was to have this knight here, this knight here, and my bishop on c3 controlling this diagonal. That was everything I wanted to be able to do. So here he played knight d7. The idea is that, well, he wants to open up for this bishop, but 
he doesn't, he's not able to move this knight because if he moves this, then I can take the bishop. So he's basically asking me what I'm going to do. And he's also maybe looking towards going knight e5 or knight b6. Now, in this position, I decided because he was rerouting his knight that it was probably good for me to reroute my knight as well. I thought that this knight was not really well placed here and that it would be much better placed on c4. So I decided to try to bring my knight to c4. Now, that's, uh, that's why I played knight d2, and the idea here is that if he goes knight e5 now, I can actually go f4 and kick away the knight, and the knight doesn't have anywhere to go. And if the knight goes to b6, then I can go a5 with the tempo, and the knight has to come back. So the knight cannot exchange itself for, for like my knight. So I thought this was really good. So in this position, instead he played bishop takes b5, and I capture with the knight, and I was super happy. Soon I was going to be able to get my two knights, next to each other, doing fantastically. I really thought if I got my knights there and my bishop here, I'd be doing great. So he played knight a6 and I played a5. Now why did I play a5 and not knight c4? Well, maybe I could have played knight c4, but the reason I didn't play knight c4 was because I didn't want him to play knight b6 and be able to exchange. Um, in the previous position, I'm stopping him from playing knight b6, but the moment that I go knight c4, he might try to exchange his knight for mine. And I didn't want that. I didn't want him to get rid of my beautiful knight. I thought my knight on c4 was going to be amazing. So I decided to take away this b6 square for his knight so that I would be able to bring my knight up. Now, after this, he went queen b8, which I think is a good move. And the idea is that I cannot go knight c4 now because then he's going to take my knight. So in this position, I had two options. I could either go knight a3 or knight c3. Now, to me, knight c3 looked more natural because... On the knight on a3, I'll be blocking my rook, and with the dream position with my knight on c4, this knight would have no future over here. So I thought the knight c3 was better, but perhaps it would have been better for me to go knight a3, because I got a little bit of issues later on. So after knight c3, he played knight b4, and here I decided to bring my knight up. Finally, my knight is over here. Now I saw that the one issue that I have over here is that maybe the queen will be able to pin my knight so actually, I would have been more happy if my queen was maybe placed on c2, but then the issue is that this knight would be here. So I was trying to deal with this pin situation, which you guys will see will become very important. So here he played queen b7. The idea here is that if he ever goes knight e5, I can bring my knight up to b6. So I was constantly trying to play against my opponent's plans. Um, and my knight would be very well placed on b6. So after queen b7, I decided that it was time for me to get my bishop out. This bishop needs to get out somewhere. But I didn't want to go bishop d2 because then there's going to be knight c2 threatening my rook, but also being able to get this knight up to d4. And if my opponent got a knight up to d4, his position would be great. So I did not want to allow him to do that. So I decided to get my bishop out uh, to either f4 or g5. On e3, I didn't like it because I felt like my bishop over here was not doing anything. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was completely blocked by a pawn. So bishop f4 or bishop g5. I ended up going bishop g5 um, with the idea that now I'm threatening this pawn and I wanted him to lose a tempo defending the pawn. In this position, he could have played knight e5 and allowed knight b6, but he was too scared to do that. He did not do it. He didn't want to allow my knight to come up to b6, which I understand because it does look very scary there. So he played rook e8 defending the pawn, but this gave me an extra tempo. Now, in this position, perhaps the best move would have been to place the bishop on f4 because actually it is better placed here uh, to kind of prevent the knight from coming up to e5. But I decided to go for a different idea. Once again, I'm playing against my opponent and what I'm trying to do right now is that I'm trying to remove squares for this knight. So, I ended up playing f4 here, which is not a terrible move. Typically, when I play f4, it's not a fantastic move because I knew that I was really weakening my king here. I was really scared of stuff like bishop d4 and my king moving away. But I thought that I'm playing against my opponent. I, I want to stop him from going knight e5. But the thing is that this made the game very, very, very tactical. Um, and you guys will see what happened. And actually at this point I was starting to get low on time. I had like 15 or 20 minutes left. So I was getting very low on time at this point. I had thought very long in the beginning of the game, which uh, wasn't too great. So after f4, he went bishop check, and I was actually pretty happy because I only had a move to make, and that felt good. I already knew what my next move was going to be, king h1, and here he played queen a6. And now you guys can see the pin that I was talking about. My knight is pinned right now, so I cannot move it anywhere because my queen is going to be hanging. 
Now in this position, I shouldn't have been so scared about the pin and I should just have gone h3 to get a little bit of air for my king because let me tell you guys, that would become crucial later on. But here, I wasn't thinking about my king being unsafe, I was thinking about this pin. So I decided to go rook e1, defending my queen so that now there would be no pin. But this was a mistake, this took away my advantage. I should have gone h3 and I should have uh, just, just basically like stuck with my plans because actually it's hard for my opponent to uh, find any, any like clear continuation with this pin now that knight e5 is not possible. But actually the issue with rook e1, the reason why this is bad is one, because now there's e6 which can open up this whole file, but two, that there's always knight c2 hanging in the air. So actually very soon he did play knight c2 and if now for instance I would go queen f1 at some point the knight c2 would be a move. So here he played f6 and when he played this I was kind of shocked because I thought that my opponent's light squares would become very very weak but after f6 I decided to go bishop h6. Now here I thought for so long about if I should go bishop h6 or bishop h4. Like I literally have two ways to continue with my bishop and I thought for so long about this. I thought for eight minutes. And I really don't like her think here. I feel like she should just move that bishop to point down towards the black king. This is the kind of move you don't really need to be thinking too much about. Just try and create some threats. And, you know, thinking that I had 15 minutes here, that's a very long time. Like, Hammer, the commentator of today's round, he was going crazy. Like, why is Anna thinking for so long? Um, but, yeah, I just, I thought this was a big decision and actually ended up being a big decision. But I just simply thought that the bishop on h6 uh, would be able to be a little bit more aggressive towards the king. But I was scared because sometimes the bishop can get trapped with g5 at some point. So that's why I was scared about this move. But bishop h6 was good. And he went now for knight c2. Once again, he missed this idea of going e6, but it's a very scary move to do. Knight c2 makes a lot of sense because it's very forcing. I need to take on c2, and then he needs to capture on c4. The idea is that he is exchanging his knight for mine, but now I'm gonna get some, some very weak squares. So here I went rook a4 to kick away the queen, as otherwise um, the queen will become pretty strong here. And once again, I should have got h3, guys. Please, in every single one of your chess games, give air for your king. You are literally gonna save so much stress by doing that, okay? I, my hair almost turned gray from not doing this. Like, I was so stressed. I should have gone h3. I really regret not doing it. Um, so h3 and, but instead of going h3, I went for queen d1 with a checkmate idea. I was trying to go queen g4 check, queen e6, and then try to get my queen up here to f7. So this was my plan right now. I was really trying to go for those ideas. Uh, but the, yeah, you guys will see. But now there's rook, uh, rook b8. Um, I played queen g4, which is pretty forced. But here, I really, really, really thought that he was gonna go knight f8. Because with the knight on f8, I mean, the king is pretty safe. It's gonna be tough for me to really get through it. And I have a situation here where one, I mean, my king is really unsafe. So there's sort of like back rank sort of stuff. But two, this pawn is hanging and my knight is pretty weak. And if I go rook a2, sometimes there might be stuff like this going on. So I need to be very careful here. So I really thought he was gonna go knight f8, but in this position, he played f5, which is a pretty, like to me, it looked very crazy because he's literally opening up in front of his king, which when his king is this weak, I thought like he couldn't do. So here I was really happy. I only had one minute left on the clock. I was blitzing out moves here. So I capture the pawn and the idea is that he goes knight f6 as he cannot capture back because of the pin. He played knight f6 threatening my queen and I went queen g3 to stay in the same file as the king so that if he would take here I can capture. And there's always the sort of checkmate threats. I mean if rook takes here this and he goes something like bishop f2 there is going to be a checkmate so he cannot do that. So after queen g3 he went knight h5 threatening my queen. And here probably just to save time, I should have gone back and forth for a little bit, but I went queen f3, which there's nothing wrong with. And he played rook takes b2. Now in this position, I was very low on time. This was very, very, very crazy. And I should probably had gone either knight d1, which is a pretty safe move, or captured on d4 uh, with the idea, and this is really pretty, the idea is that after captures and captures, I can go f takes g6. And now if he captures uh, back over here, I can go f5 and I can open up the whole position. Like if he would capture there, f takes g6, this is gonna be a checkmate in six. 
Uh, and this is really, I mean, this is like actually like really, really, really insane. But the idea is that knight f6 doesn't work because there's takes, takes, and then there is a checkmate. So this is really pretty, but I did not see this during the game that I could sacrifice everything. So, so yeah, so I missed this. In this position, I did a big blunder, like a big, big, big blunder. I need to either capture on d4 or get my knight to d1 and have my knight on the first rank to stop my opponent from doing like back ranks on me. But in this position, I went knight e4. Now, the reason why this is a mistake is because the knight is just, I'm just basically getting the knight out from my own protection and my king is very unsafe. Like there's just one piece defending from, from it being like a back rank checkmate. So here, this was really scary and my knight is actually not doing that much. Like I was trying to go g4 and maybe like capture here or whatever when the knight went back, but I'm way too slow. My opponent has a lot of attack here. So in this position, he went rook eb8, and I started getting really scared. I only had seconds on the clock. I had like 40 seconds on the clock. I was starting to get really scared. So in a panic sort of situation, I captured on g6, which is a huge blunder. Here he could have gone rook b1. But come on, rook to b1, that's a grandmaster move. There's no way, right? And after rook b1, I mean, this is really hard because if I capture and capture, you guys can see, it's a back rank. It's a back rank. I, I don't have anything. I cannot go rook a1 because the bishop takes it, which is why it was so important to take over here. So here I would have to go something like rook d1. But after takes, takes, and something... Well, I, I don't want to tell you the name, but in, tell you the move now because... Well, you guys will see, but this would become really crazy. So there's so many threats in this position. So and so over here, after he captured, he really should have gone rook b1, but he was playing really fast because he wanted me to flag, I think, and he wanted to really pressure me. So he immediately captured back on g6. But now I actually had a chance of surviving by going rook a, a1, uh, and trying to defend over here on, uh, on, on this rank. But the reason I didn't do it was because I was scared of rook b3 and him attacking my queen and my rook which in these circumstances would have been totally fine. Like my, <laughs> him taking this rook is like the least of my problems right now, which I didn't really realize, but I was really scared here. Now in this position, I decided that, okay, I need to defend my king. G4 looked really scary opening up my whole king. I did not like that. So I decided to go for this move at five. Now, what is the idea of this move? Well, the idea is that if rook b1, which I thought was his next move with the both rooks over here, after rook b1, I'd be able to go bishop c1 and block everything, and I'd have a really decent position. I'm also sort of destroying his king side. But in this position, guys, in this position right here, he did a move which Hammer, uh, the guy commentating right now on my game, uh, he's a very strong grandmaster from Norway. Like I said, he's like 2600. He literally said that he will end his career if this guy plays queen e2. Engine is saying queen e2 only move for black to win. And I can stake my entire chess career on the fact there is absolutely no way this guy is going to find queen to e2. That is the craziest move I've ever seen. Because now if queen takes, then rook takes. And the rook is attacking both the knight and the rook. And if the rook takes, then black, white's king is trapped in the corner. And after this queen e2 move... If Anna captures with a rook, then the rook comes in and once again, the king is trapped in the corner. But you have to understand, like there's computer. This guy is a chess genius. How is he looking so calm right now? I did not see this move, not whatsoever. Chat was going crazy. Nobody thought my opponent would see it, but boom. He took like 30 seconds and he played the move. Queen e2, he's sacrificing right now a queen. I can just take the queen. I can just go rook takes e2. I can just take it. But what is the thing? Well, the thing is that obviously there's gonna be rook b1 checkmate and there's no way, even though I have so many pieces, there's no way for me to stop the checkmate if I capture. So I immediately saw that I couldn't capture. And here I panicked. I really panicked because I was getting really low on time. I think I got down to like four seconds here on the clock. And I really, really, really panicked. So here I should have gone rook d1 uh, because after queen takes uh, a three and pawn takes, my rook is better placed here than when I where I went. I went instead 
rook f1 and this move actually uh loses due to queen takes f3 which i understood that he has to take over here but now actually after g takes f5 i have a really 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 big issue which is that my knight doesn't really have any good squares to go to but it's hard to see if i go knight g3 there's takes takes and king f7 and the rook is going to come over here and i'm super lost like i'm getting checkmated pretty much so he cannot do that i mean this is super duper duper lost i'm in a lot of trouble here so in this position i would have been very lost but my opponent missed it actually my opponent missed that when i went f5 it wasn't an attacking move it wasn't a move where i was trying to checkmate him no it was a move that actually allowed for me to do a backwards move with my bishop the idea with f5 is that i could go bishop c1 and so he captured on f1 thinking that he was winning after queen after rook b1 pinning my queen but he missed that after rook b1 i have bishop c1 the only move saving the game and now my move f5 became really good because i could retreat with my bishop and block the back rank let's take one step at a time what has happened the guy had this burst of genius this is such this is like the 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 chess genius symptom once you play a brilliant move like queen e2 you don't stop and wait and try to figure out oh maybe here i can trade queens and win the end game you're like oh i played this brilliant move i'm gonna continue playing brilliant moves he sacrifices his queen for the rook after having sacrificed the queen once on the previous move then rook down attacks the queen and uh the queen cannot move because then the king will be in trouble but anna solves it by moving the bishop back into defense which was crucial for me the idea as well with my rook over here is that if bishop e if bishop b2 i can go rook c4 and my rook is very safe and is defending and if he would go bishop e3, which is the best move here, then I have rook c4. Then I have rook c4 defending my bishop. And if he would capture something like over here, then I can go knight f2 and then knight d3 and re root my knight. And I will be safe. I will be safe. Here my opponent realized that he had messed up, that he was completely lost, but he played rook b4. And when he played this, I was really happy because I immediately saw that I have this idea of going knight d2. But this is completely winning for me. So now I captured on b4, he captured back, and I captured on g6 because, well, I'm threatening a checkmate in two, so why not, you know? So the idea of this was just uh, to see if, to gain a little bit of time as I only had a few seconds left on the clock. He went knight f6, and I immediately saw that I have knight d2. The only place the rook can go to is to a1, but after rook a1, I have knight b3, and I'm winning a piece. But most importantly, I am simply not losing my queen and now i'm a lot of material up and here he looked at me i i actually didn't see it i didn't see that he got eye contact with me but he looked at me as sort of in a kind of resignation like you know i want to resign but i want to make it pretty for content or whatever and he went 94 allowing a checkmate in two for me queen f7 check king h8 queen h7 checkmate and here i won the game now he was telling me it was really nice and we talked a little bit after the game and he said that the position became completely crazy but this queenie two move that he did sacrificing the queen was brilliant and uh i i could have lost the game over there but fortunately i was able to win and i'm really really happy that i won this game and right now i'm five out of seven points in my tournament there's two rounds to go tomorrow at 3 p.m ct and then the day after so this is really now like the end of the tournament. So now every single point is gonna be so important. So we're gonna see how far I can go, guys. I hope that you enjoyed watching the recap of my game and I uh, hope that I see you on round number eight's recap tomorrow. Hope to see you here. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and have a wonderful day.